Hello, everybody, and welcome to the September 30th episode of Trips and Traps. I'm Andy Serling, joined by Eric Donovan. And we got uh, six races to bring you in uh, two separate episodes. A lot of good races, a lot of uh, turf races, uh, some uh, dirt races as well, some uh, good-looking maidens that uh, we're looking forward to seeing uh, next time out to uh, probably improve uh, quite a bit uh, of some of the races. But let's get uh, into the action uh, with the race from uh, last Wednesday. It's the eighth race from September 23rd. We're looking at the uh, one Fada Field and the uh, six Mary Weather Jessica. This is a two other than allowance. Yeah, you don't have to wait long for Fada Field to run because he seems to be in a pattern of running every <laughs> five days. And immediately he gets left here. Why couldn't he have gotten left the time before that when I bet the second horse? But that's another story. And you'll watch Fetafield, and I thought he hung a little bit at the end. And remember something about this race. The race, the speed kind of came apart in here, which worked in his favor, because the eventual winner is the horse who's sort of last in the picture with Fetafield inside of him. But Meriwether Jessica, who's in a perfect garden spot sitting second here and has tactical speed, is the horse that I think both Eric and I thought had the worst of it. Yeah, I agree. From here, you couldn't possibly imagine this horse getting in the kind of trouble that she's going to get into in the uh, at the top of the stretch. And keep in mind, this is also a, a filly running against boys in this spot, too. Linda Rice, obviously, you know, has a lot of numbers in these turf sprints and, and doesn't hesitate to run girls against boys, and she has a lot of success with it. But you see where Mary Jessica, where, where the Jessica was back, you know, an eighth of a mile ago, now back to fifth, where she was fifth, she was second a little while ago. Right. Now, I, I don't have a problem with trying to ease off the pace. In fact, I sort of prefer that. And she's the horse that's outside of her is the eventual winner of the race. The problem is jamming her down the inside. She didn't have an inside post and didn't belong down there. When you do this, and we've shown this a lot, you leave yourself with absolutely no options. You just have to hope things work out. And here as they go to get ready to turn for home, Mary or Jessica, head turn, nowhere to go. Feta Field right behind her. Now Feta Field gets a patient ride in the stretch and has the advantage of at least being in last so he can swing out. Mary or Jessica ends up getting blocked the entire stretch to the point that finally in the last 16th, not surprisingly, right around Garcia just ends up giving up. Yeah, you see perfect casting, get that full head of steam now about uh, four off the rail on the red cap, uh, currently about the fifth, I guess now, and that horse gets a major jump on not only Fata Field, but also a Meriwether Jessica too, and Garcia likes to go back inside there, get shut off again, just nowhere to go with Meriwether Jessica through the stretch, and like we were saying earlier, or at least I was saying earlier, from the point that she was at early in the race to the point where she was turning for home, you just couldn't imagine that kind of trouble is going to happen with her. I, I agree, and it, it's the whole thing. I, saving ground is, is fine, I guess, though at Belmont, I'm not sure what this impetus is to always be on the rail. And Mary with Jessica is a very logical, I think the second choice in this race, probably around three to one or so. It's not the kind of horse you have to take chances with. And we discussed this with Rutherian last week. When you're riding logical type horses, you want to be in a position where if you're good enough, you can win. We don't know if she was good enough, but she never had a fair chance. We'll move on to another race, and it's a turf race. It's a, it, it, I guess it was a claiming race in the turf, and it was a race that was dramatically altered at the start of the race because a horse who had very little chance, the seven burns up the track, ends up getting left. And the reason we point this out is that burns up the track was the main speed in here. Now, I also thought that, May, that the Mayday Vow horse was also speed. That horse didn't go, and what ended up happening is the two favorites ended up being the two speeds in here, running one, two around the track and severely compromised the chances of the third finisher, New York Holiday, who's in the blue, but also Blazing Dynamo are feeling a horse that needs some pace in all likelihood. But he had good position early and spent the entire race checking and steadying, going backwards to the point where he was dragged out of the race. And I understand Kent Sermon was riding him. There's a slow pace here, fine. He sat closer to the pace this horse before. Why would you continually be dragging him out of the race? That's a very good question, especially when you're seeing the two favorites go up on the lead. And, you know, sitting third, you've got to be able to tell that these horses are going pretty easily on the front end there. So it doesn't make any sense to me why you'd want to take back out of the spot like this unless you're thinking the horse is some giant late run, which we've gotten to see Blazing Dynamo quite often in New York, and he just doesn't have that Blazing late run. No, he's certainly not the horse we once hoped he was, and he's always been a bit of a hanger. But even here, you're in the strangle mode, they're not, they went 24 and a piece, 40, 49 almost near, 48 and 4. This turf was virtually hard out there. New York Holiday once had speed and is in great form. He's rating back in 6th. He has an easy, a, a clean trip, but the slow pace did him in. And here, you see at this point even, there, there, you've already lost the position with Blazing Dynamo, but he's still relatively close. New York Holiday behind him both being compromised by the dynamics of the race and Blazing Dynamo more so because he was in position to be right there and he just kept going backwards. The idea is to be moving forwards, 
not moving backwards. That is a grand idea, especially when you're coming to the top of the stretch here to you reach the quarter pole. And you see again right there, Blazing Dynamo have to steady. And on the outside, New York Holiday gets the jump on Blazing Dynamo and takes off from Blazing Dynamo. But New York Holiday really hampered here in the stretch by the lack of pace that the front runners were able to get away with here. They were able to go so slowly and so constantly that you really had no chance to get them from behind. In a fairly run race, and both the first two finishers don't need to be on the lead, but I believe in a fairly run race where you had an honest pace and all these horses got the similar trips that New York Holiday would beat the first two finishers. He's in terrific form. Blazing Dynamo, you can even saw at the end, was coming a little bit. He just missed fourth in there. But what chance do you have with the dynamics and being dragged back every single 16th? He seemed to be losing ground in a slow pace. Don't get it. Thought he had no chance. I hate to keep liking him. We'll see where he ends up next, and he does want a firm turf, but he's a horse that's had no chance time and again. Probably getting a couple more races this year, maybe, but uh, you got to think from this point on, the races get, uh, the, the paces get softer and the, and the turf gets softer as well, which may not play in a Blazing Dynamo's favor. Yeah, but at Aqueduct, hopefully, we'll get some competitive paces. Uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. Obviously, you have to analyze where they go, but these are horses that were compromised. And we'll get one more turf race in before we go, to the, before we break from this segment. And this was a maiden race we ran, I guess, on Saturday. And it was our second race. The winner was a Linda Rice horse. The horse we want to look at was the eventual second finisher, the four Flying Valentine. Yeah, Flying Valentine breaks a little bit slow here. And we've seen this a number of times uh, a horse breaks a little slow and especially in these six furlong races the jock wants to you know get him involved early on here but uh, you take it an extra step here where you're rushing up to the lead instead of just trying to gradually gain position you use the horse's run on the first quarter of a mile and that's going to take some starch out of flying valentine later and, and as we'll see there's a little bit uh, of a race dynamic change as they make their way around the turn power blast the winner of the race the one horse comes so is going to come up the rail and, and the jockey on the four flying valentine is going to you know sense that that's their time to run and, and instead of sitting just back a little bit, Flying Valentine makes this big run three wide around the turn when Power Blast comes up inside right here. Right. I thought this was the more aggressive position, and then a fair argument could be made. He's trying to win the race. He's not trying to finish second at this point. He ends up finishing second, but it almost costs him second. The eventual third finisher is the six, who's been left sort of behind now. No question Power Blast was winning this race, but you're right. He had a perfect trip. He made that nice, comfortable inside move. Flying Valentine was forced to be put on the chase after he had to make up that ground early. I don't blame John Velasquez for trying to get him in position early. It's a bad break when you get the bad break in that situation, especially in these turf sprints. But ultimately, he almost gets caught second, working so hard to try to win the race. And the point being, he's not exactly a hidden horse, Flying Valentine, but he is a horse that finished second, beating around six lengths in here, that ran, in our opinions, a lot better than it looks like on paper. Yeah, and he's trained by Mike Trombetta, too, who's based down at, uh, in Maryland, so you're going to have to keep an eye on him, make sure he doesn't uh, pop up at Laurel and the entries are down there as well. But the Flying Valentine, uh, you know, for me, I, I think a horse definitely moves forward second time out off that trip. No question about it, though Mike Trombetta, we'll see what happens in New York. He has just that one winner here in over six plus months, and that was an off the turf stake. Anyway, that will do it for our first segment of Trips and Traps. We always appreciate your watching, and we appreciate your thoughts. Heard some good stuff during this past week. Let's try to appreciate it if you can keep it up and uh, give us some help. It's Trips and Traps at NairaInc.com. And make sure you tune back in for the second segment.